Hey golfers, I'm Drew Mahole, the Second Swing Golf here at the Second Swing Tour Van in Minnetonka. I'm joined by Thomas Campbell and we've got the Ping G425 Crossover. Uh, I know the crossover clubs from Ping are kind of that utility iron. Um, Ping calls them the crossovers. Um, they've been awesome the last, I think, three or four generations. They've had them in their G line. And now the G425, it's uh, new for 2021. I mean, there's, there's lots of, a lot going on in that club. Uh, I think, well, first, it's on the outside of the club that really catches your eye. It's that stealth Hydro Pearl finish, kind of that darker color, um, which looks awesome. And uh, so, Thomas, you're about to test it out. But first, before we do that, I just want to get your opinion on that look, uh, both just the outside in general, that, that finish, but also that address. What does it look like? Yeah, I really like this black stealth Hydro Pearl finish look. It makes the club look a little bit sleeker, mm -hmm. so it doesn't look like it's super large. Now, we did a video this year on uh, the G710 irons. Yeah. So it, for me, it looks like a slightly smaller version of G710. It's still got that it's black, but then it's got that gray and mm -hmm. white contrast, which I think is very, very important to help with kind of alignment. Yeah. But also, it looks very, very clean. So I really like the look of it. Uh, when we did that test with the G710, when I hit that four iron, I was really impressed. So I'm really excited to see how the crossover does as well. Because I know that forgiveness is very, very important in Ping's golf equipment. Yeah. So I'm looking for a hybrid slash crossover slash driver iron that's going to be forgiving, it's going to be flying fairly high, give me a chance to stop the ball in, when I hit the ball into the, into the green on a par five or two, or yeah. maybe a longer par four or something along those lines but also give me the option to hit it off the tee as well. So I want to make sure that I can get something that kind of drives and goes pretty far off the tee as yeah. well. So I think this is going to be a, a good club to test in 2021. So I'm excited to test it now. Yeah, I mean, that category, that utility iron category has been, you know, increasing with popularity for a while now. Um, golfers really want that versatility of off the tee. And then, you know, like you said, for example, going into a par five on uh, your second shot or a par four, a long one. Um, being able to use the, uh, the same club for both uh, and have that same sort of feel and look to it is, is something golfers are really looking for nowadays. And so Ping, the crossover line has kind of filled those needs for golfers and G425 seems to be no different. So I'm excited to, to watch you hit some shots here, Thomas. So before I do test and hit some shots with the 425 crossover, I do ask is if you have not subscribed to our channel yet, make sure you do so. Click on that red subscription button down there on the bottom. We've got plenty other great content coming your way in the future. I'm excited to test this G425 crossover out. Let's hit some shots. Let's do it. That's pretty impressive, the first swing there with this club. You almost hear a little bit of that ping noise with this club it's kind of a it is loud uh for sure but um, that's kind of the result of a hollow body club uh, nowadays i mean with the materials that they put into that and then the hollow body you're gonna get that loud sound uh, but the numbers here so that's just one swing but the numbers here are pretty good yeah i normally like to hit uh most of my clubs in my bag about 100 feet in the air gets a little bit more challenging once this gets starts getting down to your five your four and three iron mm -hmm. Check out the height on that one there, 102. So talking yeah. about the height with the G425, stock golf swing, still plenty of height to get the ball to stop on the green. We noticed the carry was 242 going 260, so about 18 yards. Mm -hmm. But considering I'm hitting it that far, and also spinning a little bit to give you a chance to stop on the green with some very, very high ball speed, good start right. so far. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that was excellent start. And you know, I know based on uh, knowing how far you hit your, your kind of utility iron or a longer iron, this is about the distance you're looking for there. Because I know you like to say, well, if there's a bunker out there that's 270 yards away or so, I want to have something I can get into the fairway. That is exactly the shot that you'd want to hit there. Yep, that was about as good as it gets right there. Mm -hmm. So we'll hit some more shots with it, but that's a, yeah. that's a great start. Didn't quite hit that one as solid. Let's see, look at that. I yeah. Mean, that's the forgiveness in the clubs nowadays. Uh, and so the way Ping does it with the crossover is the, you know, weighting and the heel and the toe expanding that perimeter weighting, which is kind of that key term for essentially increasing MOI and forgiveness. Yeah. Um, is, you know, release or kind of eliminating the twist of the club at impact 
um, kind of stabilizing it if it's not a center face contact. And so I know you maybe missed that a tad, uh, which maybe dropped is the reason the, the height dropped. But then now, now the spin also decreases, which penetrates, uh, it creates a more penetrating ball flight and carries farther. Yeah, the spin decreased from about 3,400 to 2,700. The height dropped by about 16 feet. Carry distance, we'll notice my first shot was about 242 going 260. Well, this one was 238 going 262. So even though that was a miss hit, hit it a little bit on the tall side, dropped a little bit of height and spin. We're talking three or four yards. Right. It's not, you know, when I'm hitting the club 260 yards, right. I expect some really good forgiveness out of a club. So yeah. that, was, that was impressive. Yeah, I mean, hey, we're gonna talk about, we're gonna associate ping and forgiveness for, you know, we have been for years and we're gonna continue to do so because of shots like that where miss hit, but the numbers are nearly the same in terms of the distance that the ball traveled, so. Yeah. Can't get much better than that. Let's hit a couple more. Another one I didn't quite catch perfect. There you go. There I we mean, go. Very similar to the last shot. Yeah, not quite as you know high as the 100 feet that you're looking for, yep. but if the consolation of not catching it um, quite in the center is just a little bit of a drop in height, but the ball still goes the same distance, I think you're gonna accept that. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't quite catch it perfect, the ball speed dropped, but what happens is that spin rate kind of drops a little bit. We're talking about that carry distance being pretty consistent there across the board there. Mm -hmm. We're talking six or seven yards so far. And that, that last one was not hit very well. That was not, I mean. Well, I, from, yeah. you know, I know you like to hit kind of a baby draw too, and even though you're missing it, you're still getting that same trajectory that you're looking for, that kind of, uh, you know, five to 10-ish yard draw is still the result of these shots, which is, again, a testament to the forgiveness. Yep. Let's see if I can hit a couple that I hit actually solid here. <laughs> <laughs> that was hit well. All right. So that's the example there where I hit it really well. Mm -hmm. Notice what happened to the height. Height was yep. a little higher. So that's exactly what I'd be looking for if I'm trying to hit something into a par five and two and getting a yep. chance to stop on the green there. That thing was hit so solid. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yep, and then, you know, like you said, that height increase, that spin was maybe a little higher than the miss hits, but that carry distance, you know, I think every single one has been within, you know, right around that 240 range, yep. all of them have. And so, I mean, it seems like right now, regardless of where you hit the ball, that's, it's gonna carry roughly that same number, um, which is really good to see. And again, that, that's club speed to ball speed number there, that, that smash factor is pretty darn good too. That's efficient. Uh, for you uh, with this with this club so far. Yeah, that was good. So I want to also the you know, nice thing with the crossover is you can hit it kind of off the tee on a on a short par four. Or you're really trying to hit the fairway. You talked about that maybe that 270 shot mm -hmm. that I'm trying to make sure. So I'm going to try and maybe hit this a little bit lower. Okay. And just kind of see if I can see what happens with regards to chasing out. And now that we've got that versatility yep. to hit this off the tee as well. Mm -hmm. so. There you go. So you maybe drop that height a little bit. That was kind of your low ball flight, uh, penetrator, you know, kind of tee shot, chaser down the fairway shot. Um, and you said, you know, if there's a bunker out there 270, I want to put this in the fairway, they have 264 total distance there. That's pretty good. Yeah. Um, what'd you think about that? So easy to hit. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I feel like I maybe didn't quite catch that one. I'm being picky. But you are being picky. Maybe didn't quite catch that one. I'm always pretty picky. So. Yeah. I mean, it's not but. like you to be picky with your shots, <laughs> Thomas. No. Uh, but yeah, I mean, that's the shot you're looking for. And, and it sounds like, you know, maybe those first couple that you miss hit a little bit. Yep. It work absolutely perfectly as one of these shot, uh, these, these chasers, too. So um, there is the there's forgiveness, but also kind of the workability, both in this club, because you're able to shape the shot that you want. There's that low, lower, uh, more penetrating shot. And then uh, I know you have the ability too to kind of hit that higher one that we saw in the shot before, where it went 113 feet in the air and it kind of stopped quicker. And you can do both of those while, you know, also having the forgiveness in there, uh, which is a rare combination to get all those things into one club, but Ping's done it here. Yeah, when I'm trying to hit the shot, I'm trying to keep it really under 100 feet. Yeah. Probably in that 80 to 100 feet range when I'm hitting this particular shot here. Yeah. So let's, let's hit a couple more. Let's see if I hit it a little bit more solid. I mean, like I said, I'm being picky here, <laughs> but. Imagine I got a little breeze into me here. <laughs> Fairway finder. Oh, 
Oh boy, there we go. That was crushed. Yeah. Oh. There it is. 84 nice. feet. You still carried 240? Yep. Yeah, it's been really consistent around that 240 mark yeah. every time. It's really interesting. You know what? I'm going to bring that up quick. Uh, the Yeah, so I mean, look, at, there's the 240, right? Where, I mean, this is very zoomed in. Uh, so, I mean, it looks like it's, uh, these circles are not that large, right? I mean, yep. we got the, there's your scale, but right around 240 every time. You got these four right here between, you know, the, those are the two low flight ones in the yellow, and then the white ones are kind of the standard swings that you had. But I think these two down here were maybe your, uh, miss hits. You know, your, your <laughs> miss hits. You didn't quite catch them perfect. Yeah. And look at how close they are to that 240 mark. Yeah, very forgiving. Mm -hmm. Very forgiving. But also a good chance to stop the ball in the green if you need to. Mm -hmm. You can fly a little bit higher where it's designed. So it's, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a great option. I personally love the look. It looks a little bit sleeker now that it's black as well. Mm -hmm. So for me, I like the look of a slightly sleeker look. Looking down at a crossover or a utility or a driving iron, what do you want to kind of call it there? Looks good. It's performing yeah. really well. Now, we can maybe try one more shot here. We can try the, uh, if you want, I know you like to hit, you know, going into a par five, for example. Yep. Like to kind of a higher fade shot, maybe to, you know, if you're trying to make sure you hold the green on a shot like this. Um, we saw kind of already a shot like that, uh, but you maybe want to tee that one up and try it one more time here, see if we can get that one in there. Why not? You're putting me on the spot, but why not? I am not? putting you on the spot a little yep. bit. But I, I know you got the game for it, so. Please fade. <laughs> oh. A little higher, mm -hmm. but that one I did not fade. That one, my club face was still just a little bit closed, yeah. but. So one more. That was that was the height I was looking for. Yeah, I mean, you're trying to hit faster. it, but you know, probably 110 feet or so. Yeah, probably what you're looking for. That should be a little better. Oh come on, where's the fade? <laughs> <laughs> can't can't fade it today. <laughs> I mean, I will say though, the height on that. I mean, you, you hit the ball high enough there. Yeah, that might have been actually your your farthest. Uh, like carry, carry per se, 244. Yeah. So that was the farthest ball carry wise. I think both of those actually were up there. So yeah. that tells you that you know you have the ability to, you know, work the the trajectory of the shot with this club. You know, you hit the lower, I don't want to say stinger necessarily, but like the low penetrating flight off the tee. And then if you need to attack a, a green, you know, uh, from 250 yards, let's say for you, for example, you can hit the ball 110, 120 feet in the air, land it softly on the green. Uh, in that scenario as well. So this club gives you the ability to do both of those things. Yeah, it looks like I need to work on my fade game a little bit, but if we pull up like the height differences between those three tag tags essentially, yeah. you can see that if, if we look at the height, when I was hitting it normally on average it was about 95 feet in the air. So yeah. I normally say around about 100 feet yeah. is, and that's with a three iron, three iron utility as well. So cross all where I would expect maybe be a little lower, lower. So this flies definitely flies a little higher than some other models might. Hit that lower one, and I'll just, we drop about seven feet in the air, just mm -hmm. to drop down a little bit. But then we have the ability to hit the ball higher with this particular model as well. So we'll notice the landing angle, what changed there. Very, very close to that 45 degree range, yeah. which is then gonna give you stopping power. So when I hit that one, the difference between the carry and total distance there was about 15 yards, 15, mm -hmm. 16 yards. Notice the carry distance with all of them are very, very similar, kind of basically right. 240 to 243 there. But when I hit it a little bit lower, it's going to chase out a little bit more. So when I try to hit that lower shot, the fairway finder, I'm not trying to stop that thing on the fairway. I'm right. just trying to get it to go a certain distance. Yeah. And chased out about 21 yards. So mm -hmm. there's definitely potential ability to change up the different shots that you're trying to hit with this particular model. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I mean, you, you just showcase the, the versatility there. And I think it's also worth noting that the spin on all three of those types of shots that you hit, right? The high shot, the lower shot, and then kind of your stock swing stayed very similar across the board. So, uh, you know, I think the, the, the mod, one of the key words in really all of the G425 clubs, maybe not necessarily attached with the crossover as much, but I think it applies to your spin consistency. Yeah. Uh, spin consistency, in other words, but um, staying consistent with this club, regardless of the shot type, and you're still able to work the flight a little bit. So. Uh, I think, I mean, G425 crossover looks like a real winner here. Yeah, it's going to be a, a great option for players that are looking for that, you know, that club that's in between your fairy woods and your, and your irons. Mm -hmm. 
more forgiveness in there, a little extra help, but also give you some workability in a, in a crossover essentially. Yeah. So. yeah, so golfers looking for a maybe a utility iron uh, that kind of bridges the gap, right, from your irons maybe to your uh, highest lofted fairway wood. The G425 crossover is certainly uh, one of the best options out there right now. Uh, as Thomas has suggested so far, you can hit really any of the shots that you're looking to hit. Uh, so if you're interested, uh, first, you know, if it, you have a hybrid or a fairy wood maybe that you want to trade in, you can take advantage of the highest trading values in the industry uh, at Second Swing in our stores or online at secondswing.com. And then also, uh, you can stop in to one of our stores, visit online, talk with one of our team members. They'll get you fit for a G425 crossover for your game, get all the specs that you need to be successful on the golf course. So, Thomas, thank you for hitting the shots, providing your insight on the G425 crossover.